Thank you for listening to the message today. We would love for you to share in the comments how God is speaking to you through his word. If you would like to join our online church community, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon on our YouTube page so you're notified when we post a new weekly sermon. You can also learn more about The Rock Church by visiting our website, rockag.com. If you are in the Scottsdale, Phoenix area, make sure to come visit us for Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. We would love to meet you in person. And if you would like to support this ministry today, you can donate by visiting our website and clicking the giving tab at the top of the page or by texting the amount you would like to give to the number 84321. Then follow the instructions in the text reply. Thanks again for joining us. We look forward to hearing from you. We've already had church. You know, if you didn't hit the cafe, I start having church when I see Leah and her team in the cafe. <laughs> and they just set the stage for the for fellowship. And Leah, thank you for leading the charge and all the girls that help you, all the ladies. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> Praise God. And then the worship was, was uh, fabulous. Uh, and this is church. This is, this is church. We had a, uh, a great... Yeah, we're, I haven't forgotten the offering. I've been around too long to forget it. <laughs> Hold steady with me. Uh, yeah, I had a super just prayer and worship meeting Wednesday night. We're going to do that every fifth Wednesday and not do our Bible study the fifth Wednesday. Just give us... And it's, it's geared around ministering in prayer to each other. It was just really one big altar call. <laughs> And it was uh, just a wonderful time. This is, we will continue with our Wednesday nights. That's something different. Say in the last 15 years, we've usually taken Wednesday off. Our AJ campus is taking Wednesday off, uh, which is fine, in July. But we're not going to do that. However, our men's and women's monthly breakfast meeting, they're not going to have those in July. They're going to take a little break, uh, a little break there. So with that being said, it's time to give to the Lord. Can everybody give the Lord a hand when it's tied and offering time? Praise God. Just another way that we worship uh, the Lord. And there's a bazillion ways to give. It always goes up on on the screen and our baskets are on the right and on the left. God's meeting the needs of this church. God is... uh, Faithful because you're faithful. And I know that you're being blessed because we collectively are being blessed. We're still able to do more than pay the bills. We're able to invest in our neighborhood. And you are together and collectively, we're investing in missionaries around the world. So continue to be faithful. And You know, the Bible talks about tithing. It's God's way to provide for the storehouse. I just, if, if, if uh, take a step of faith and obedience, because in the scripture it's not optional, uh, and try for four to six weeks and see what happens. That's fair enough. Because I know if you try it consistently from your heart in obedience as unto the Lord, that you'll never turn back. You'll never turn back. Because God always reveals himself through giving. He gave his life. That's the way he reveals himself. Let's say a quick prayer. Lord, I thank you for all the faithful givers in this church body. So, Lord, you're using those resources to touch our community as well as around the world. And I pray today, God, that you would bless every giver. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing in their lap. I pray, Lord, today that you'd bless every tither because it's your way to provide for the storehouse, the church, and you always return back to us. And those, Lord, that are even living in a whole other realm of generosity, just continue to let your mighty hand of blessing uh, rest upon their lives as well. God, we do it because we love you. We give because you first gave. We give because you first loved us. We give because we love you. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you this morning. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yeah, go ahead. Clap when you give. (laughs) 
you, baskets to the right and the left, and you have to walk. For those of you, about almost 80% of us now are giving uh, through the app or electronically and, and all that good stuff. That kind of went to a whole new realm during COVID. And I'll tell you, I'll confess, I'm old, I've still got some old school in me. It, it's something about a check to me. And so if you look at my checkbook, every check is written to the Rock Church because I don't write checks to anybody else. So anyway, that's funny. That's funny how that works. But thank you again for your faithfulness. If you can't give with your check, there's always ways to give. So praise God for that. Y'all ready for the word? Yes. Whew, I can't wait the next week. We're, uh, we're going to talk about the rapture next week. And yeah, maybe that trumpet, that trumpet may sound before we get out of here. Uh, even in the summer when it hits a 110 degrees, these big old monster air conditioning units, by the time we have the altar call, we, it's time to go because uh, this big old concrete building acts like an oven. But anyway, somebody said the church is not here to be popular, but to proclaim the good news of the gospel to those that like it and maybe those that don't like it. Oswald J. Smith, who wrote many, many books and some uh, devotionals, old timer, gone to be with the Lord, says this. Why should so few hear the gospel again and again when so many never heard it once? And we're encouraging you. And our, the culture here is really beginning to change as you're sharing your testimony in the gospel with people in your world. We want to encourage you uh, to do that. John Quincy Adams, the sixth president of the United States, <laughs> said this. My hopes of a future life are all founded on the gospel of Christ. That's a pretty strong statement coming from a president. Gospel. What does the word gospel mean? What does gospel mean? Good news. Good news. Isn't it good to have good news? You know, and I, I read three, sometimes four papers daily, really, because I want to keep up with what's going on out there. But I tell you about 90% of it's uh, bad news. About 90% of it is yucky news. About 90% of it is fake news. I mean, who knows? But the gospel is always good news. The gospel is always true news. The gospel is good news. So everybody ready to hear the good news this morning? I love the meaning of the gospel. <clears throat> On April 17th of this year, uh, uh, Uber, and they keep statistics, and some of y'all have been Uber drivers, some of y'all may be Uber drivers, even as we speak, and they uh, uh, polled their drivers to, to tabulate the most forgetful cities in the United States of America. Pretty weird. It's kind of pretty funny. Out of 10, we didn't make the top 10 in Phoenix. What do you think we were? You read the article too? It's seven. How did you get that? Did you look at my notes while I was worshiping God? Yeah, we were number seven. The most forgetful cities in the uh, U.S. And, uh, Miami was first, Los Angeles was second, and it goes Atlanta, Houston, Dallas, Orlando, Phoenix, Tampa Bay, Denver, and Austin. At least Phoenix, at least the valley is not as forgetful as those South Florida folks. Rick? Yeah. Was it Uber that called you and found your pet turtle? Uh, You've never rode Uber in your life. <laughs> the loss includes tons of things. Listen, anybody missing a toupee? No toupees missing? How about two jars of spiders? That sounds like something Houston would leave in a car. <laughs> I mean, the list is crazy. 
There were trays of food, which is kind of understandable. A ceramic cat. There was a blanket of a guy that said, me and my dog with a picture on it. There was a candle that says, see you in court. Must have been one of those attacky lawyers. I'm not sure. And somebody just left a stick of garlic butter, not in the wrapper. Forgetful. And, and the list goes on and on. You can Google it. You can pull it up. And you're saying, Pastor, what in the world? You always start out or most of the time with a story. Why are you starting with some kind of crazy story like this? I'll tell you, when I read the story, it reminded me of the Lord. It reminded me of something about him. Does that shock you? Because the Lord can be forgetful too. Hmm. In fact, he has a delightful, magnified capacity to forget. When we tell him we're sorry for our sins and means it, he not only forgives it and washes it, he completely forgets it and throws it as far as from the east to the west. Have an altar call. That one put chill bumps on my ball spot. Sometimes we don't forget, but he forgets. It was as if, if you've repented and asked for forgiveness, like you never did it. He said in Isaiah 43, 25, God said, I, even I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. And then Psalm 103, what I just quoted, he said, uh, as far as the east is from the west, he has removed our transgressions or our sins from us. Thank God he forgives. Thank God he washes through his son Jesus. And thank God he forgets. That's a big, big, big deal. And so today I'm just going to share last week as well, just a simple, simple gospel message, which to me is still the most wonderful message on the planet. I mean, we do book studies. We do topical studies. We're doing something in Wednesday night in the book of Mark that is just outstanding. But boy, the simple gospel. Luke 19 and 10 and here's the focus. It says, for the Son of Man, that's Jesus, came to seek and save those who are lost. Paul, writing to the church in Corinth in chapter 2, the first two verses said, When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you about God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. That's the main thing. We read in 1 Corinthians 15 and a few verses, and, and we're going to pull those up one through four. Paul writing said this, let me remind you, dear brothers and sisters, look to your neighbor and say, here comes a reminder <laughs> of the, what does it say? Good news, I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. Here we go. Paul writing, I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Here it is. Christ died for our sins just as the Scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day just as the Scripture said. It's all in there. Everything Christ did for us is all in those few verses. Of course, many other places in the Bible. I'm so thankful this morning 
that Jesus died for our sins. If you've asked Christ into your heart, you know that. If you haven't this morning, Christ died for you. I mean, I've, I've thought about this over the years, and I've had people ask me, why did Jesus have to be crucified? Why this whole thing? Why, 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 uh, why did Jesus have to be crucified? But, but the key is he was crucified for, according to our verses, our sins. Me, you. The scripture says, all who would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus didn't do it for Jesus. Uh, Jesus did it in obedience to the Father because the Father sent him to earth to do it. But Jesus Christ died for you. Jesus Christ died for your sins. 1 John 3 and 5, it says, And you know that Jesus came not just to die for your sins, because we're answering the question why, to take away their sins, for there is no sin in him. Romans 3 and 10 said, No one is righteous, not even one. You know what the, the qualification to get into heaven is? You got to be righteous. And nobody is. Not me. Not you, but Christ died who had no sin, who was perfectly sinless to pay for our righteous payment. Not only to cancel the debt of our sin, but to make the righteous payment. And I use this scripture in Romans 3.23. It says, for everyone falls short of the glory of God. There's not one righteous, not one. That's why Christ died for me. We've all sinned. That's why Christ died for me. And a scripture I use often, for the wages of sin is death, Romans 6. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ died for us. Jesus paid the price for us. Church, hell is a reality. It's not something that's made up. In fact, if you study uh, the Bible and you study Jesus' ministry on earth, he spent more time talking about hell and judgment than he did heaven. By far, do the study yourself. And he talked about it, I believe, because that he knew it was real and he knew it was coming for anyone who didn't turn to God during their lifetime. And Jesus is so good because he gives us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to make him Lord and Savior. Why did Jesus die? He died so that we don't have to die for them. Jesus had to go to the cross and die so that I don't have to die for my own sins and spend eternity in the flames. What a good God we serve. That's good news, y'all. I said, that's good news. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. He died so that we don't have to die, so that we someday can spend eternity in heaven forever. Thank you, Jesus. But there's something else that happens when you sin. It's not only eternal damnation, but the thought of being separated from God. Separated from God. Pull that picture up for me, Stephen. Now, the word sin, actually, if you study the original language simply means to miss the mark. It was actually a military or an archery term that was used. And when you were target practicing, the bullseye was the mark. And if you missed the mark, and it was one Greek word, harmatia. And if you missed the mark, they would shout, harmatia. 
you miss the mark. In our sin, we miss the mark. He paid for us. We miss the mark. Isaiah 59 and 2 said, it's your sins, us, that have cut us off from God because your sin, because of our sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Separation from Almighty God. A chasm, a chasm between us and the other side. Us and heaven, us and God. And this morning, if you haven't accepted Christ, there's eternal punishment ahead. And I don't say that with any judgment. I don't say that looking down my nose. I say that with a broken heart. There's a hell to pay, but in Christ there's a heaven to gain. And you know, and we all know because we all sin, what it's like to live separated from God, separated from peace, separated from joy, separated from love, spiraling down into the darkness, trying to do it on our own without God. We know sin separates us from God every time. And that's even on another note, and it's not my message this morning. Even for the saved, thank God for confession and repentance. Even if you're saved, aren't you glad you can get up in the morning and, and you go, oh my, oh my, I blew it. Uh, surely not first thing in the morning, but I've been known to do that. <laughs> Confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins because it causes separation, even for the saved. Not lostness, but it affects your relationship with God. But if you haven't made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, your future's not bright. I don't care what you're doing down here. And how does it feel to live separated from God? It's like a chasm. And God's over here, and there's all this joy and salvation and hope and freedom and deliverance and healing. And some of you have heard about it now over and over and over and over. And we talked about being hardened by the gospel last week, and you're still trying to jump over the chasm on your own. And you can't do it because the gulf... is impossible and that's a picture of a man's relationship without God well the good news this morning is I wish I could have found another picture. Only through Jesus Christ can we cross the canyon. Only through Jesus Christ can we get to the other side. Only through Jesus Christ can we get from point A to point B. Jesus is the bridge that crosses the great divide. Hallelujah. God so loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in Him would not perish, but everlasting life. God the Father built a bridge across the chasm, the impossible chasm, the separation. God the Father built a bridge from heaven to earth that anybody that would confess their sins and repent and ask Christ in, they have a bridge of relationship of walking with God God Almighty and the blessings that go with it and they have a bridge that will get them to heaven for eternity someday and that bridge is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus and that's the good news of the gospel. Yeah. Hallelujah and a scripture I use and you can take it down Stephen there's one God and one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus and, and, and then the last part of that verse says who gave himself as a ransom for all so he died and that's why he died and then he was buried the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5:21 for God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we might be made right with God through Christ. Boy, that's a little scripture verse, isn't it? 
So he not only died for us, he was buried. They put him in a tomb for uh, three days. Why? He paid the price at Calvary. He bore the weight in the grave. When he went to the grave, he carried the world's sin to the grave. But let's personalize it. Not just the world's sin. That's a big brush stroke. My sin and your sin. Jesus knows the weight of sin. So not just the penalty, but the weight. You know it too, don't you? I remember my life without Christ. Young professional business whippersnapper like this going further and further Paul writing to the church in Galatians said you reap what you sow if you sow the flesh you reap from the flesh you sow the spirit you reap it's not just the penalty of sin it's the weight that comes with it it weighs you down you think it's fun the scripture said for a season it may be fun but eventually it will crush your Mind, sometimes your body, your spirit will keep you from God forever. Sin will get it, in, get, get you in its hold. Where you know you sin, you get forgiven. You sin, you get forgiven. But one time you sin, and now it's got you. And it doesn't matter what you try, because there's a weight that goes with it. And then you continue to practice that garbage, and then you start reaping what you sow, and all that goes on your shoulders. He bore it all. When he went to the grave, he carried it all. And sometimes it's not the, just the weight of sin, of heartache and woundedness and disappointment and uh, tragedy and shock. There's, there's weight in all of that. So when Jesus went to the cross, he was going to pay the penalty that I've talked about, but he carried every weight with him to Calvary. Every uh, time you were victimized uh, mentally, emotionally, even sexually, again, every wound, every heartache, every sin, every result of sin, he carried it to the cross and he died at the cross and then they put him with the weight of sin, the weight of the world, think of that, on the Savior's shoulders and they buried him and put him in a tomb. The sin that has killed, the sin that has destroyed, the sin that is defeated, all buried. And then we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 and 5, then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be filled, fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is, your, where is your sting? When Jesus bore, carried the weight of sin to the grave, it died with him. He carried it. it was, sin was the cause of death. It's in the grave. It's in the tomb. It died with Christ. If you've made Christ your Savior, it died when he died. Thank Thank you, Jesus. That's good news. Yeah. 
And this morning, if you're carrying the burden of sin, of course, if you're lost, you're lost. But if you're carrying the weight of sin or the weight of somebody else's sin or you've been victimized or you've hurt others or you're hurting, Jesus is here this morning to take the weight off of your shoulders, to wash the sin out of your life, to heal your broken heart. That's the good news. Boy, that's really good news. That's good news. See, death has been defeated when Jesus buried it, was buried in the grave. Sin has no longer any authority or control in your life. Wow. Unless we give it back. That's a topic for another day. Romans 6 and 9 said we are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and Jesus, He will never die again. Death no longer has any power over Him. And because death has no power over Him, if you've got Jesus in her heart, death has no power over us. Hallelujah. It, still, and we could do studies on the prophets. We can study prophecy. We can study Revelation. We can study Mark. We can study James. We can study topics. It doesn't get any better than the good news, y'all. <laughs> Romans, and we're going to read this one together. We'll hit it real quick. Romans 6, verses 3 through 6. Paul writing, Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in bad, baptism, we were joined with him in his death? That's what I just described to you. For we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Is that amazing scripture? Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. What a verse. That's all past tense. So we identify with that. He paid the penalty. He paid the price. He carried it to the grave. He bore it all. He paid it all. These scriptures said, I died. I have to. I died with him. Now, sidebar, it's a picture also of water baptism, which we will be doing the last Sunday of July. So there will be a sign up out soon. Celebrate water baptism. But water baptism is an outward symbol of what's already happened in the heart. I was living in sin. I was paying the penalty for sin. I was living in the world. I was standing in the world. My sins, when I go down into the water, are buried with Christ. So they no longer have a hold on me. When I'm, my sins have been buried with Christ, I've been washed, I've been cleansed, I've been freed I've been liberated and by the way when they died in the tomb with him Jesus has forgotten all about it then we're raised I'm still surprised sometimes at the questions I get from believers sometimes especially uh around funerals and memorials and different things like that. And we are still going to celebrate Eva's home going. It's, we finally know it's going to be October. And so many of you have been asking me. And, and Rick, we love you. We've been praying for you. 
I know you do. And thank you for your faithfulness to the Rock Church and to the Kingdom and the King. And Eva was as well. I'm missing one of my encouragers. She was always an encourager to me. And so I miss her. When I miss somebody that's gone from to be with the Lord, I'm always thankful for the good news. <laughs> wow. But I've had this question over the years, uh, and it goes something like this. Now, once and I've had it go. Now, once a person dies, do they still have a chance to get saved? Or I've had people say this to me. Well, once a person dies, they still have a chance to get saved, right? And usually, it's a broken family member, and I have to be really kind because my heart grieves with their heart but no that's not right you only get an opportunity on this earth to choose now everybody gets a choice but when you're gone it's too late y'all according to scripture I know there's some false teaching out there you cannot buy your unsaved loved one into heaven after they've died. And I don't really mind saying that. I do have a lot of good Catholic brothers and sisters that love Jesus with all their heart and not wrapped up in some of the religious garbage and have come out or stayed to try to win others. But the Catholic Church has taught for thousands of, several thousand years that if you'll send in a big enough offering on a regular basis, we can get them out of purgatory into heaven. It's a lie from the pits of hell. And again, I, I don't like throwing anybody under the bus, but I don't mind exposing false doctrine either. But the bottom line is the scripture teaches this, that you have a choice and opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to get saved while you're on earth. But if you die and you didn't make that choice, you're not getting another one later. And that's Bible. Study your Bible, read it 15 times. That's Bible. So I'm saying, ask Christ into your heart today. Last week we used the scripture, today is the day of salvation. Say it with me. Today is the day of salvation. Today's your day. That's for somebody here. That's just more than Pastor Dale. But today is your day. Christ died for your sins. He carried him to the grave. And he rose from the grave. On the third day, he arose. That's important. Death alone did not conquer sin. Because he would just be dead. And if he was dead, we would be dead. Romans 6 and 9 again, I'll read it. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. Christ rose from the dead. He paid the penalty. He carried the burden. But the burden didn't kill him forever because on the third day he rose from the dead and he's at the right hand of the father interceding for you and I because Jesus the good news is Jesus is risen the good news is Jesus paid the good news is Jesus bore and bears the good news is he's not dead any longer he's alive Jesus is alive he rose and because he lives, we live. Because he lives, we live in Christ. Death, where's your sting? Death, where's your death? I'm saved. I've got Jesus in my heart. And it will be better on the other side. <laughs> oh. To be in the kingdom of heaven forever. 
is breathtaking. Tim, if you'll come. That's the good news. And I, it's when I preach heaven and the gospel, and it's hard for me almost, it's a mental, it's a, a flashback. <laughs> and I, I don't share it to be sensational, although it is quite sensational. When I had really my out of body, right at an out of body experience, when they, I was headed to Louisville. They landed the plane in Denver because and I don't feel like I should go into the whole story. When they put me on that stretcher, when the airplane pulled in, the, they called ahead and the ambulance was coming and the stretcher was there. And I'm sure I was pretty foggy about some of it. I think I know there was a doctor there that helped me get to the stretcher, and I was in, I was in a lot of pain because I'd been passed out, and when they laid me on that stretcher, God came. And there was peace beyond human Imagination. Laying on a stretcher. Right off the plane. Whirling through the airport. And I went, Lord, it's you. I'm laying on this stretcher overwhelmed by the peace and the glory of God. And I said, Lord, I love my wife. First words out of my mouth. And I, and I said it out loud. I don't know what the EMT guys were thinking. I said, Lord, I love my children. And I said, Lord, I love what I do. But I said, if it's this good, I'm just as, I'm ready to go now. Lord, you can take me right now. There are no human words when you get at heaven's door even though you love the good things God has given you how much you want to go it's real y'all it's a good news All sins are erased. All burdens are gone, buried and forgotten. And all you have left is eternity with Jesus and the loved ones that went before us. And I'm so thankful God forgets and forgives. He didn't remind me of one sin on that stretcher. Not one, because he'd already forgotten them. And to tell you the truth, I didn't think about them either. And all I'm telling you this morning is he's paid your way. He's carried the death to the grave. 
and he defeated death and he's alive forevermore.